Hello there. Today just started the Women's World Championship match in Shanghai and here we have the first game. So with white pieces here, uh, Alexandra Gorgianchina from Russia, the challenger, against who is the world champion right now from China, Zhu Zhenzhu. So uh, Alexandra here just play d4, knight f3, all these lines she's always playing. And here it started a bit of surprise for her because Zhu Zhenzhu, she used to play here always bishop b4. But in this game, she decided to surprise her opponent with bishop e7. Bishop e7 and then uh, the Russian player has to, had to think a bit about uh, the position, about what to do against this move. And she decided to change a bit also. So she plays the Catalan here with g3 instead of the move that she used to play, that it was bishop g5. She had a game actually last year in this the same position she decided to play bishop g5. But today she was thinking like, okay, my opponent just prepared me a surprise, so I have to do the same. And here you have g3. So uh, they decide to play like just normal theory here. In this position with the Catalan opening with white, you use you can just sacrifice here this pawn because you are always taking back somehow. Look at this move, knight e5, and then you are just already taking the pawn on c4 if you want to in next move. But, and also white gets a lot of uh, development in this position. So after c5 here, uh, they decide to exchange queen actually. And this is already a quiet position. Um, black has an extra pawn for now, but they need to, the pieces here in the queen side need to develop as soon as possible because look at this, you are playing with two, three pieces there, like not doing anything. So after castle with uh, the black pieces, they decide to, well, she decide, I'm saying, Zhu Zhenzhu, <laughs> decide to play nice e6, that is actually theory. And well, the things like the knight here is protected with just one pawn and is attacking with two, uh, with two pieces here. So um, after bishop c6, pawn takes, just simply in the next move, we can take any pawn, either c6 or I'm saying c6 here or c4. Um, why with white, you could decide like taking the c6, the knight on c6 with the bishop. Well, you will see in the end game, actually, with white, uh, the white pieces, they decide like just to keep the knight against the bishop and you will see why but let's uh, let's continue for now the game with bishop e3 here so after bishop b6 white takes on b6 black takes on b6 and seems like uh, black already just uh, fixed the pawn structure here because before was a disaster as you can see here look at these pawns here suffering these three pawns I mean, not suffering, but really weak, you know, when you don't have any pawns beside, then we call an isolated pawn. And those are the weakest actually in the pawn structure. So after bishop takes on b6, pawn takes on b6, why is I taking on c6? The good thing, the, the compensation for, for white, let's say, because in this position you could tell me like why with white I would like to fix a black's position, black structure. So the compensation is like we are taking away the pair of fish for black, the black pair of fish I'm saying. So as you can see here, these two bishops are going to be stronger than knight plus bishop. So we are just taking that part, that pair of bishops away. And after bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, bishop b7 and then knight b4 and knight d5. So they were playing like super, super quiet, to be honest here, like exchanging one more piece here. Bishop takes and knight c3. But the steal is not like totally, totally dead draw because as you can see here, you can find the difference, the bishop against the knight. Actually here, you can just understand why, why they side in like few moves before 
taking on c6 with the bishop so mainly it was because uh, now the knight has a lot of like more space but actually later on you will find out like why what i am talking about so let's continue here bishop c6 rook d1 rook d8 and in this moment we need to do something uh we need to like actually just give some square for this king and actually to to make him work so f3 and then we are creating here a root for the king it's going to the center you know that the, in the end game the king is really important so king f2 okay with black also she uh, the the chinese player she wants to improve the king as well and here alexander decides to exchange one pair of one rooks pair of rook and then king e3 here why king e3 because we want to control this square mainly we don't want to allow obviously any entrance of the rook on d2 and then e5 controlling the center also like taking some space there not uh, giving up the entire position here in the center because if you don't if, you, if you're not doing anything here then with white is coming for example for instance uh, f4 f4 and just maybe trying to control the the center like and well in the in the end game it's better to play like really active active move so e5 then rook d1 and here you can just play this move rook a8 so um actually if she decided if she decided here taking on d1 exchanging the brooks on d1 could be well more like drawish move let's say but instead of that she decided to play rook a gate trying to fight for the game and alexandra play a3 just moving that pawn not not letting any uh, weakness there so um king e6 knight to e2 a2 and with the knight here trying to control maybe another square there on b4 here um trying to control that square and well bishop a4 rook d2 f6 bishop c6 here and e4 okay so here they were trying to control the center both of them uh king e3 just uh f5 you see like this was just a, a maneuver for white moving back the king and then e4 so f5 there's exchange and f4 and after h5 just changing here and this is a really equal position uh, the only huge difference here is the pawn structure look at these two pawns here you could just um, actually here you could just notice that these two pawns are also isolated pawns as we will talking we were talking about at the beginning um, it's possible to attack them easier easier than these two pawns for example they are weaker a bit weaker so uh because they are protecting it to each other the h2 pawns and the g3 pawns but okay here still is not the end of the world just because of just those two pawns there b5 here knight c3 and this move is not the best let's say rook a7 because actually frankly it's not that she's losing with the rook a7 but he's giving up the the square on a d8 i'm saying so um with white you could just try to go to d8 and maybe just go for those weak pawns just trying to get into the black's position right so after rook a7 knight to e2 and then bishop e8 and look at that rook d8 is coming so this position i guess like was the mm, let's say like the most unbalanced position that white could get in this game but it still wasn't enough for like trying to go for the victory or something so here check and here maybe I'll, this is not the most accurate move king d2 because maybe it could be better trying to go to the king side here 
trying to go to F2 or F3 and then trying to, well, maybe attack those weakness instead of going for this U that they are protecting each other. So after King D2, Rook E5, 95 check. So uh, Rook D6 and here Bishop C6 because of tactics. Um, Jujin Jut is thinking that if white decide taking the pawn, the bishop, of course she can take back the knight on d5. So Gordian China doesn't want to because here you can notice the difference. Look at this white white pawn here. All of them are in black square in dark squares here, and with black we just have the light square bishops bishop. So you you cannot attack even if you want to even if you just uh, uh try to do whatever like move the bishop as many times as you want to you cannot because the pawns are in the different square but the knight can go wherever it wants and so uh it's possible to attack the pawn on h5 it's possible to maybe just jump around and just trying to get that weakness on b5 as well of course, it's not that easy because of the bishop is uh, can just defend almost everything. Actually, right now, bishop f3 here, for for instance, and uh, the game was like that. And then with the bishop, you are defending the pawn on h5 here. And after h4, bishop g4, rook d5. So uh, she accept exchanging rooks. And here, just simply, they tried actually the Russian player, the young Russian player with 21 years old from Russia, Alexandra tried to go, try to win the game actually because here where she was like looking for a lot of uh, different moves, going with the knight everywhere, trying to like just attack the pawn on b5 and then try to go for the h5 pawn just jumping everywhere and here going to f4 trying to attack h5 but then bishop g4 and here everything is under control for black because as you can see the, the bishop is just simply defending the pawn on h5 and if you are trying to go to somewhere else and trying to attack that pawn for example with the knight just uh, going to d4 here. So then the bishop is coming back. It's coming back to defend. He could always go, the bishop could always go to defend from, from here to b5 or, well, on g4 defending here. Or maybe just, so you just need to keep the bishop in this diagonal or this one, right? So he, she tried and now she's attacking the pawn on b5 here she's trying but it's coming back the bishop and here well they just try they're just trying to well with black she was trying just to resist this position and with white i guess like she was trying to find something but wasn't easy at all actually jujan ju was defending pretty well and after b4, they just exchange one pawn here. And looks like after king c2, well, here, white is going somewhere, but still it's not true, actually, because after king b4, the king is coming back. And here, well, in this position, if with black we decide taking this pawn, then we are just giving up the pawn on c4. So instead of uh, taking on b2, Jujan Ju decide to play bishop e2 and defend the the c4 the c4 pawn. And here just defend the the f5 pawn here. And king c5 coming back, going there. So in this position, if you are trying to um, take the pawn on c4, look at this. If the knight actually is taking, sorry, the f5 pawn here. Okay. 
Well, so if you are trying to take that pawn, then you have to know that black is going to take the pawn on b2 and it's going to be really dangerous at this pawn, right? So uh, if you decide instead of taking on f5, if you decide taking on c4, then black also can just, well, now right now it's defending there, it's defending on c4, so you cannot, but it's always possible, you know, taking on, on b2. So the exchanges here are not that good. So they decide just after bishop d3 here, taking, um, well, taking the draw, finally. <laughs> after 97 moves and more than five and a half hours playing. So this was, this was the first round and tomorrow we will have the second round. So hope that you like the video and well, hope to improve also for the next rounds and to see like really exciting games. See ya!